Hey everybody, how you doing? Mark here. I am standing on Young Road, right at the end of the um, Black Hawk Trail segment of the Ice Age Trail. And the reason I am here is because on that side of the street is the Blue Spring Lake segment. This is going to be a 7.1 mile hike through some pretty gnarly um, hills, but they still rate it as a three, and I'm still trying to figure all that out. <laughs> the rating system on the hills just baffles my mind. I've been on stuff that I consider to be relatively flat. It's a three. I can do something that's got a lot of hills on it. It's still a three. I don't understand. <laughs> I've only been on a couple of sections that are actually listed as a five and those had a couple of really big hills but the hills around here they're rolling they're just up and down up and down up and down you know maybe 20 30 maybe even 100 feet but it's still a three <laughs> i don't understand it so the weather today it's kind of cold it's starting out i think i'm right around 25 degrees right now the winds are blowing five mile an hour right now but it does gust up to around maybe 10 13 something like that and so yeah it gets a little breezy i've just got a hoodie sweatshirt on which is fine because once I get moving, I know I'm gonna warm up. And if I had a second coat on, if I had that North Face, North Face Pill Fill jacket on, I would be hot almost immediately and I would just have to take it off. So I'm just starting with a lightweight um, hoodie zip up as you can see. And yeah, I'm just gonna get going here. I do have gloves on my hands again until I warm up because that tripod's gonna be cold. And I do have a hat just to protect my ears again until I start warming up. All right, let's get on the trail. All right, so we will see how this day goes because the trail is full of ice, as you can hear it crunching underneath me. And a, another vehicle pulled up and about four or five people piled out of it and they are grabbing backpacks and trekking poles and stuff like that. So I don't know if they're doing this segment or if they're going to do the Blackhawk segment across the street. I don't know. There was a parking area that was just off of County H, just past Young Road, just on the north side of it. But that said that there was a fee involved. The state of Wisconsin is so weird on their fees. For a resident to take a daily parking fee just to park in the parking lot is $8. Why eight? Why is it such a weird number? Because they do not accept a credit card. You know, you don't put in your card number on the register or anything like that. It's got to be a cash or a check. Well, <laughs> I looked in my wallet. I didn't have any fives and ones to make up $8. All I had in my pocket was a $20 bill. And it actually says on the uh, registration informational board that any overpayment will be designated as a donation. <laughs> um no <laughs> i'm not gonna do that either i mean i appreciate the uh the park system and stuff here but i tell you they really nickel and dime you they really do 
So I remembered that when Jen picked me up after I'd finished off the Blackhawk segment, which I actually want to go back and redo that segment. Um, I remember their parking on the side of the street. Now the thing is, the Ice Age Trail website does not list parking on that street. So in case you didn't know about it or weren't aware of it, you wouldn't know it's there. So you'd be forced to pay the $8 fee for the parking lot. And there is a trail that comes up to the Ice Age Trail from that parking lot. All right, let's see what this day has to offer. <clears throat> now I know that we will be reaching um, a spot called Stone Elephant. And it's basically a big rock formation. I guess it kind of looks like an elephant. I've never seen it before. But uh, we'll get a chance to see it. <coughs> uh, okay, so here's where we're at. So if we were to turn left, we would go to County Highway H. There's a little parking area there. That's what the P stands for. And that's where that fee area is. So this here... This trail is actually what comes up from that parking lot I was just talking about. But we are going to turn right and we are going up this way. It looks like it snakes around and goes up into the hills over here. Awesome. Okay, well, I know it doesn't look bad. You can see the slope of the hill there, but it doesn't look bad on when I'm walking up. But it's pretty steep. And the trail, I don't know if you can tell, has been packed down quite a bit. So it is slick. My feet keep slipping out from underneath me. I don't have ice spikes or anything like that. So I'm just having to move a little slower than normal. Okay, so let me uh, tell you a little bit about the stats on this trail. As I've mentioned before, it is 7.1 miles long. It has a Hill difficulty of three, as does most of the trail systems of the Ice Age Trail. Wow, that's a lot of ice. <laughs> that's all ice down there. And then uh, the trail difficulty to actually navigate the trail, see where it goes, I think is actually a two. So to navigate the trail is not actually very difficult at all. Oh, <laughs> I really gotta watch for those ice, icy areas. Uh, I think we're almost to the top of this hill. I would say about halfway. See, uh, this is a big hill and it hits you right away at the very beginning. And we're coming up on top of, I think it's called Bald Bluff. But we should have a really nice overlook up here. This is icy, snow covered, full of rocks, and everything's sticking out of the ground. Wow. <laughs> it's pretty gnarly. All right, here we are at the overlook. And yeah, look at that. <laughs> amazing, amazing view. Got a nice little house sitting down there. Bit of a farm through the trees over there. I mean, wow. You can just see forever. And they're even nice enough to give you a couple benches. There's a bench over here. There's another one behind me over here. So, <laughs> nice little spot. Oh, look at that. This green sign over here actually says that the stone elephant is 1.5 miles away. It's kind of nice, they gave me a sign. All right, 1.5. 
Okay, so this is supposed to be 7.1 miles. And with the conditions that this trail is in, I'll be lucky if I get it done in six hours. <laughs> it's really, really slick out here. I mean, basically what happened is over the past couple of days, we've had some pretty warm weather. And in fact, today is going to be warm too. But with the snow packed down and people walking on it and stuff like that, <laughs> it has turned the trail into a pretty good ice slick. You know, then it refreezes overnight after it melts. Well, I ended up stopping a few times, taking pictures and uh, doing some other video clips and stuff like that. So it didn't take long for those four people to catch up to me and and pass me, which I don't mind. You know, I'm kind of glad that they're in front of me now instead of behind me. Oh, well, guys, look at that. That is a large log of coyote poop. Wow, <laughs> that's actually kind of big. Yeah, that pile of coyote poo. <laughs> There's another pile right there, in fact. It wasn't the first, it won't be the last. I think I've seen, I think I've seen? I think I've seen probably about four or five, I'm thinking five piles of coyote, six piles of coyote poo. So yeah, they are definitely around here. Oh, this is so beautiful. I picked a good day to do this, I really did. So how have you all been this week? I've been okay. Uh, I really wasn't super busy or anything like that. I played D&D this past week with the kids. So that was nice. Oh, got a bit of a, a path crossing here. Hey, look at that. They gave us a map. So let's keep moving on. Oh, I think these trails are for like snowmobile riders and stuff. I think that's what they're for. But again, I'm not sure. You know, I, all I see is uh, the orange little blaze marker over there on that post. There's another one just behind us over there. But we're going straight across. Follow the yellow blaze. So uh, one of the things that's different, I don't know if you can tell or not, is my sound. I ended up having to get a new wireless system and I'm still playing with it. So if the sound sounds a little funky, a little different, that would be why. I'm still kind of playing with the settings a little bit, trying to figure out what's the best. And uh, what works good? Oh, dang, another hill I gotta climb. So yeah, I'm climbing up to the top of this one and then it might come down this way and over that way. I think, I'm not sure. <laughs> I was just kind of guessing. Oh, almost there, almost to the top, don't slip now. <laughs> Oh, oh, I made it up that hill. And I was right. I was going to go right back down in that direction. Whew. It wasn't very big. It was just a little steep. Oh. <laughs> Again, whew. I can't believe they rate this as a three. Those are some big hills I've been going over, but it's only a three. <laughs> you know, I want to say that this area, the Black Hawk, maybe even the Whitewater, those should be bumped up to at least a four. Again, I don't understand their methodology on labeling the hill difficulty the way I would do it is I would take the total up and down. So how much elevation are you gaining? How much are you losing? Add that all together. So it's basically one big number. 
divide it by the mileage that you cover and then within a certain parameter is a one another one is a two another uh, parameter is a three so on and so forth uh, hold on this is a steep decline i'm going to stay off the main trail and i'm going to stay off to the side a little bit <laughs> this is very steep and very slick so yeah that's why i just came down <laughs> i just walked out on the side of it stay in the uncompacted snow so i get a little more grip and even that was <laughs> iffy so yeah that's the way i would personally do it i would sit there and add up all that up and down stuff divide you know all the elevational increase add the elevational decrease add that all together so you get one big number divided by 7.1 for this trail or 8.4 for another trail or whatever and then that would be your basis of if it's a one two three four or five depends on where that number falls within a scale i basically think that all they did is they had somebody come out here and they probably had people all over the state doing it and they were all at different uh health um status with their body you know so someone could come out here and say oh yeah it was all right you know got a little winded but it wasn't bad i'd give it a three or somebody else who's a fat butt like me did a more level terrain but still got winded from it so i would say the same thing you know i just i don't know how it worked out i just don't like the uh the ratings that they give these trails for the hill difficulty i would say that the the trail difficulty rating i think is good you know it's easy to follow the trail it's well blazed it's fairly wide for the most part so i would keep that at about a two but the terrain i think it should be higher than a three all right cool there is a sign for the stone elephant, so we are going to turn left. Yes, we're going to leave the Ice Age Trail. And that's the stone elephant right down there. Okay, guys, so here we are. We are at the stone elephant. Now, the features of the elephant are very, very slight. So I'm going to try to explain what it is I'm seeing as the elephant, okay? It's not a whole elephant. It's just the head of an elephant. I am standing at the front of the head. This area that comes down and wrapping around and, toward, and curves down and back, that is the trunk, all right? And in fact, you might be able to see a little bit of a shadow line that starts right about here and goes down into the snow. So this area here is the trunk, okay? Now, someone has actually taken chalk and has drawn a little line here to indicate an eye but if you look close enough at the rock there's actually a little indentation here that to me is where the eye should be right here but you know someone drew it in there to make it easier for other people okay then the ear you can kind of see a line in the snow here and I'll actually draw it with my hand it comes back like this and comes down whoa <laughs> to this little area here and then this kind of swoops back under back up okay so that's the ear goes there comes around comes back up and meets the head so all that is the ear I hope you guys can see that so it's very slight and yeah it's just how someone has interpreted it they looked at it and say wow i can kind of see an elephant head in there and now it's got the stone elephant name 
Doesn't even crack my top 100, but I can at least say that I've been here now. Let's get back up on the trail. All right, we are back up the trail from Stone Elephant, which is down there. Let's keep moving. Uh-huh. Someone stopped for a break, took off their sunglasses, and left them there. All right, well, I'm not going to have these sitting out here, so I'm going to take them with. So what do you think? Are they me? <laughs> no, they're not. All right, let's keep moving. Oh, wow. Sorry. Seeing all this, it's, I'm coming up to a bit of a clearing. Got a bunch of pine trees and stuff all right here. This is nice. Look at all this. <laughs> That's nice. That's real nice. Oh yeah, hold on. Okay, so if you're wondering what's in my backpack, I have a can of soup. I have my uh, Coleman stove, my single burner stove that's like, like that big. Um, I also have my Stanley cup to heat it up. I'm not going to cook it in the can itself. I could if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. And then I've got uh, two bottles of black peach tea and I've got a bag of M&Ms just to snack on, a pop tart for dessert after lunch. So yeah, that's basically what I've got in my backpack. Uh, it is pretty heavy because of the soups and stuff like that, the Coleman stove, the propane tank and all that stuff. It's not light, but I knew I wasn't going to be out here for, you know, tens of miles and multiple days and stuff like that. So I did go with some slightly heavier gear, but I'm handling it just fine. You know, it sits on my shoulders well. I would like to replace this pack at some point because the interior of the pack is getting pretty well turned to crap, really. <laughs> so I would like to replace this at some point. But uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to actually sit or actually stand because there's no bench or anything here. So I'm going to stand here, drink down some of my tea, just get a little hydrated, cool off a little bit. I have started to sweat. So yeah, God, this is a beautiful area. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of a break and suck down something to drink. Okay, so my little break is done now. And I'm going to continue on. Now this pine forested area oh man that was I wanted to keep on going down this big huge trail here and that's not it it actually turns and goes into the woods over here <laughs> good thing I actually saw all this uh, ice on the trail down here kind of indicated to me where to go so yeah I drank down about half a bottle of tea and ate my M&Ms. I'll give me a little bit of blood sugar. And my tea is decaffeinated stuff. I tell you guys, I'm a quitter. I really am. <laughs> Back in high school, I started smoking cigarettes. Kind of stopped doing that. I went on to smoke cigars and pipes instead. And then one day, um, we had made a run to a mall, and this mall had a, a little cigar shop in it. And I'd always grab one or two cigars out of there. And this time, I grabbed two, and I was smoking one on the way home. And suddenly, my stomach just started feeling queasy and nauseous. And, um, pulled the car over and actually threw up on the, down the side of the car, put the cigar out, and said, well, it must have been that that made me sick. I don't know why. 
And then probably about a week later or so, I lit up the other cigar and I was just at home when I did that. And again, I wasn't even halfway through the cigar and I started feeling nauseous and sick. Different brands and everything like that. So it's like, what the hell? So after that, I gave up smoking. Apparently my buddy, my body was telling me that it does not want that in me. So <laughs> it was just really weird. And I have not had a pipe or cigar or cigarette ever since. And that was 20 years ago, something like that. And then I think it was around June or July last year, I made a bet with my daughter that I would not drink alcohol for the rest of my life. Not that I drank all that much anyway, you know, occasionally here and there, you know, dinner with the in-laws, they always have a wine and my father-in-law is always wanting me to try these bourbons and brandies and scotches and stuff like that. You know, go out to eat for a nice meal and have a drink. But so far I have not had any alcohol and it it really hasn't been difficult for me because I haven't relied on it, you know? I don't have to sit there and go, well, I need a drink to wind down from a day or, you know, I'm feeling stressed so I need alcohol. Just haven't had the need, they haven't had the urge to uh, drink it. And then the third thing that I am quitting is soda pop. Now that's hard. That one is hard because I am a caffeineaholic, <laughs> and I drink about a pot of coffee between 6 a.m. and noon, and then I would normally start drinking soda after that. Diet soda, diet cola. I was actually getting like this acid reflux, and I think it was from the carbonation of the soda. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna stop it, but I need to replace the liquid or something. It's, I don't know why, but I always feel the urge to drink a lot. And water after a while gets very heavy and bland. Ah, oh, goody, another big hill. <laughs> so yeah, I, I've pretty much stopped with soda. I haven't stopped completely. Basically, the only time I have a soda now is when I'm out with friends, maybe out with Jen at a restaurant, I'll get a Diet Pepsi or something like that. And that's about it. I have no soda for me in my house. Jen still has some. She likes drinking Diet Mountain Dew. She likes it for the caffeine intake but I have not been drinking anything. Sorry, gotta pay attention to my steps. This is uh, another steep hill. <laughs> okay, get to the top of the hill. <sighs> Whew. That was a good steep climb. There's a bench coming up here and I'm gonna use it. This isn't a bad view at all. Let me spin you around and I'll show you what the view is from this uh, little bench I'm sitting on. All right, so here's the view from the bench. Ah, oh, crap. It just dawned on me. I left my phone in my truck. So I can't look up anything. I can't look up to see what the temperature is turning into or, or what time it is or anything like that. Damn, I can't believe I did that. Oh, that also means that I cannot call Jen to come get me or get an Uber. Oh, frack, now what am I gonna do? 
what am I gonna do? All right, I gotta panic and think about this for a little while. Do I call it quits here, turn around and go back? Or do I keep on going and hopefully get somebody to let me use their phone to call Jen? If there's ever gonna be anybody at the Emma Carlin parking lot. So I don't think they have a phone there either. Oh crap. All right, <laughs> I've got to think about this. So I think the next big thing we're going to come across is an equestrian uh, camp area. So if you have horses and stuff, you can bring them out to a, a trail system out here. They're not allowed here on the ASH trail, I don't think but you can ride them on other trails through the area. And if you're through hiking the Ice Age Trail, I remember reading in the book that um, they have showers at the campground and you can use the showers if you're booking the shelters that are throughout the Southern Kennel Marine System. There's one down in, I think it was the Black Hawk segment. There's another one in uh, Scuppernong Trail. And then there's another one even further north than that. So if you're booking those sites to hike through, you can use the shower at the equestrian campground. You can't camp there, but you can at least use the shower. All right, looks like we've come up on Tamarack Road, right up here. Go we'll across and just keep going. I have not heard any cars or anything as I've been walking for the last uh, maybe 30, 40 minutes or so, so I figured we weren't near a road. So that actually kind of surprised me that all of a sudden we came up on one. Okay, there's a trail that goes off that way. There's a trail that goes off that way. There's another trail that goes up and around over here and we need this one up here. I see the yellow blaze. Oh, and a map, let's figure out where we're at. Okay, so we're here, right down there. That's uh, Tamarack Road, that black line. And we're gonna go up this way. What's this map say? It says we're there. Okay, so the horse campground, the equestrian campground, that's that little circle with the triangle in it. That's their campground. So we're just about there. We'll go past that and make our way up this direction and over to Emma Carlin, which is over here where these peas are located. So yeah, we are almost done guys, almost done. Three hill difficulty, my white pickled ass it is. Oh. I have gone up so many large hills. Plus up and down other smaller ones. I'm sorry, Ice Age Alliance people, you need to redo your hill duff difficulty rating system. This is hard work. I know it's especially hard for me right now because I'm in the ice and snow and all this other stuff, but uh, that's the next hill I gotta climb right there. That's where I came from was way down there. Oh, I was actually having a good run of some fairly level stuff. And then all of a sudden they throw this behemoth in front of me. Of course, you can't go around it. You got to go up and over it. <laughs> oh, all right, let's keep going. 
All right, here we made it down to Little Prairie Road. Just across the street. So, yes, hiking, no horses, no bikes. No snowmobiles, no dirt bikes, no nothing like that. Oh, crap, another huge hill. Oh. Yeah, this is a three. Yeah, sure, okay. Oh. oh, I finally made it up here from way down there. Right, I know I'm going to get somebody that lives out in the Appalachians or even the Rocky Mountains that are going to sit there and go, oh, that's nothing. Well, I'm not used to walking that shit. You know, if I grew up in the mountains and I was walking them all the time, that'd be one thing. I'm in Wisconsin, you know, known for small rolling hills. You know, it's a lot different going from old railroad tracks and stuff that I normally walk to the wilderness where you're going up and down severe hills, you know, three, four, five hundred feet. I'm not used to that stuff and I'm not the most fit person either. So I don't want to hear you guys bitching about how this train looks so easy compared to the Rockies or the Appalachians or the Himalayans or some stupid thing like that. Oh well, yeah, the trail splits off. Got a little bench up there that you can sit on if you want. You can uh, take in the view of whatever you can see through the trees. But our trail goes to the right and we'll just keep on the Ice Age Trail. All right, water and horse camp. So right over here is the equestrian camping area. I'll assume that those are our bathrooms. Might have the shower in there too. There's another building down here. So, yep, that's the equestrian horse camp. Okay, where am I going? Looks like I'm going straight ahead. Right now, my thought in my head as far as getting back to my truck is I'm hoping that someone will have a cell phone I can borrow to call or text Jen to come pick me up. That's the only thing I can think of right now. Huh, I wonder what that little banner is. And that little thin bright orange banner. It looks like there might be another trail just over here, but I don't see if any signs of anything being on it. Oh wait, there might be a sign right up here. So, private lands ahead. Don't shoot this direction. Houses ahead. We will not shoot. Well, I don't have anything to shoot. So, we will continue on. Alright, looks like we came across a trail crossing here. And it looks like it's maybe part of the uh, equestrian. There's a lot of prints. Some of them are human. I have no idea. There might be horse prints in there too. But we go straight across and keep going on the Ice Age Trail. Okay, so the trail looks like it kind of split and a part of it went off to the left. But we just keep going straight on the Ice Age Trail, as you can tell by the marker there. Let's go. Gee, I don't know why, but this area just looks really spooky and creepy. <laughs> and we gotta go right into it. Don't know why. I mean, the rest of the trail seems fine. I don't know why this feels any different, but it does just a little bit. I came up to this nice little barn back here. There's a blue house just over here. And it looks like a road going right in front of it. Oh, looks like we got a map up here too. Okay, so the map says we are up here. Right by the Carlin Trail Road. 
So we're going to follow this yellow line all the way over to here. Don't know what's past that. We look down here and it says we are here. And again, follow the yellow line to County Z. And then we'll be at the Emma Carlin. So not too much farther. Okay, so I'm just gonna sit here and have a little snack. Drink down some more tea. This bottle's just about gone. So right now my plan to get back to my truck is to hopefully find someone at the Emma Carlin parking lot and either ask for a ride back to my truck or ask for a cell phone so I can call Jen and hopefully she'll pick up so I can leave her a message saying, hey, come pick me up. Or um, if, I, you know, if she doesn't pick up, I could leave a voice message for her and hopefully she'll get that. But I'm hoping that she would actually pick up and that way I know that she gets the message. <laughs> I hate to sit there for a couple hours and realize she never got the message, you know what I mean? It's looking like some clouds are moving in up there. I don't know if you can tell or not through the trees, but it's not as sunny as it was before. Temperature wise, I'm still doing all right. Nose is a bit cold. My back is sweaty from having the backpack on. Oh, I'm going up another good sized hill. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on the weather. I hope I don't have to go walking back to the truck. Cause that would really suck. All right, so I almost missed this. I was looking at the ground, watching my footing. So this path here is not what we take. If you go that way, it goes to the Carlin Trail Road. So that'll take you back out to the road where we just were by that red barn. Over here is a post with some yellow on it. It's very faded and painted and stuff like that. <clears throat> but it actually tells us to go to the right over here. So follow our yellow blaze. So with me probably getting to be a mile and a half, maybe two miles from the end yet, I'm gonna start wrapping this up a little bit. My brain is getting more and more consumed with how am I gonna get back to the truck? So my conditions today, of course, were cold and icy. The snow was very well packed down, very slick. I couldn't tell you how many times I've actually slipped. Luckily, I haven't, <laughs> hopefully I'm not gonna curse myself. Luckily, I have not twisted an ankle or my knee or anything like that. So <laughs> I'm glad about that. Then, as far as wildlife goes, I haven't really heard a lot. I've heard a few birds here and there. Heard um, some squirrels chittering away, barking at each other, or barking at me. That's been about it. I've been seeing signs everywhere. You know, I mean, even right here in the snow, those are deer prints going off in the snow. Those are old. But I mean, I've been seeing them all over the place. So I've seen signs of animals. I just haven't really seen a whole lot of animals themselves. I've heard and seen a woodpecker, didn't get any picture of it. Um, I saw a cardinal and that's really about it for birds. I've heard crows crawling and stuff like that, but eh, just not a whole lot. Oh, well, I've been going through a fairly fairly level area. I haven't had any large hills to climb since that big hill after that farmhouse out on uh, uh, Carlin Trail Road. Yeah, I had a big hill there. I came down it now I've been kind of walking in this in this area here and it's actually fairly flat. And I'm thinking that that's a sign that I might be getting to the Emma Carlin lot in the end of this trail. In fact, I see, 
I just saw a couple of cars up there. I don't know of another road that I was supposed to cross, but <laughs> not saying that I'm not supposed to cross another road. So yeah, the uh, wooded area. I just came through that area back there. It's really opened up, thinned out. It's more like a prairie land now. But I'm hearing, I'm hearing traffic just over here. In fact, I got a car coming this way. Maybe we can catch it. Yeah, there you go. So that might be County Road Z and the end of this trail. All right. Now, the Ice Age Trail parking lot is the Emma Carlin parking lot. It's blazed with blue. You can see it there on that tree. If we keep going this way, and that's what I want to do, we are going to hit County Road Z, and that's where we will end our trail. And then from County Road Z, we'll just walk the road to the Emma Carlin lot, and hopefully there'll be somebody there to help. I could also hitchhike. Um, there's a lot of traffic that I've been hearing going down County Road Z, so if we have to hitchhike, we can do that too. So just a few hundred feet down from that trail intersection to go to the parking lot. Oh, excuse me, get the burps all of a sudden. We are at County Road Z. And if you look across the road, that is the Stony Ridge segment right there. We've already done that. So this is where we stop. So turn to the right, walk down that green sign you see down here. That is the Emma Carlin parking lot. Let's see if we can get a ride or borrow someone's phone. Well, as you can see, I am back at my truck. Just as I came walking up to the entrance to the Emma Carlin parking lot, um, a guy and um, a girl both came out of the Emma Carlin trail system and I talked to them a little bit, asked them for help to get back to my truck and they were happy to oblige. So Ryan and I want to say Destiny, but I don't think that's right. Sorry, sweetie, I forgot your name. I am horrible with names. Denise, maybe? I'm sorry, I can't remember. I told you guys about my channel and everything. So anyway, I am back at the truck. 7.1 miles. I just got here around 10, I think. Maybe a quarter two. And then I got to the Emma Carlin trail system at two o'clock. So yeah, it was a, it was a hard walk. It really was. And now I get to go home. I'll grab some lunch on the way. Like I said, it's past two o'clock now and I'm starving. I, I never stopped to have my soups or anything. I've still got my bottle of tea here that I didn't drink. I was kind of just holding on to that, not knowing exactly what was going to happen but made it back. <laughs> All right, so this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. Um, stay tuned next week. Um, I want to do a little bit of a video on my bike. A lot of people have been asking me questions on things that are on my bike and things that I've done in modifications and stuff like that. And so I'm just going to quickly kind of go over Angel and tell a bit about her and what I've done to her and the things I've changed. Now, keep in mind, a lot of the stuff that I did, I did when I first bought the bike. And back then I really wasn't worrying about brands and stuff like that. I, a lot of the stuff I was getting, I think was more OEM type stuff, but it was just bolt on stuff. But anyway, I'm going to go through my bike and kind of show off a few things. So, all right, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys on the road. Bye.